We introduced Kadili to Canadian activists who were pissed off that their government was destroying the planet. We have been, and this is also like uh, to be kept in the down low, we've been working with the Yes Men the past little while to do a statement on behalf of the government of Canada. Canada is one of the main countries that's blocking progress, and it's because they sit on the world's second largest oil reserve. The plan was to impersonate Canadian and Ugandan officials and make a big announcement. With nothing but websites, duct tape, and pipe cleaners, we got down to the high-tech business of becoming Canada. What we're trying to do is just recreate the press room. These are the microphones. They're supposed to look like these really expensive ones, and they're just pipe cleaners and kitchen sponges. All right. Like how just prop this up. Like here you go. Let's see. Is that high enough? I don't think so. I know it needs to be a bit higher. It's working. Okay. Can we draw some lines? A little bit of salt and pepper. <laughs> it's just great. Meet the minister, well, not the minister, the assistant, the deputy assistant secretary to the minister of the environment of Canada. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're rolling. Dearest delegates and fellow citizens around the globe, this is the day that will define our century. Canada is fully acknowledging its historical climate debt and the legal responsibility that follow. Climate debt reparations are not aid. They are a legal framework that sets everyone on equal footing. But to us, it's more than mere economic issues. It is about the droughts, the famines, and disease. began with this press release announcing the astonishing news that Canada would generously pony up $13 billion to the African countries. Then there was this article on what looked like the Wall Street Journal's website. Then a news conference purportedly by the Ugandan delegate posted on what looked like the Copenhagen conference website. Dearest delegates, it looked amazingly real until the speaker compared Canada's oil reserves to a loaded gun. And seemed ready to pull the trigger on millions of us around the globe. It was all a hoax. Where is this? This is the Boba Man. Wait, the, the real, real Environment <laughs> Canada quickly released its own release to contain the damage. It totally has worked. And it was, it was good. Like, what's the reaction be? Because it was, like, the, the government here is really pissed off. So that, so you guys, that worked out really well. I was in the plenary session at the time that this happened, and I really can't comment any further. You think it's a game, but it's not a game. It's a serious issue. You're playing games. You're, I'm you're, not that, playing games. Are you expecting anything different from the Americans? If yeah. Obama does something differently, and maybe Canada will follow. Absolutely. Okay, so what's your name, sir? My name is Dick Impala. I'm with Environment Canada. All right. You don't really work for Environment Canada, do you? Well, I, I, I do. I, I represent them uh, better than they... But, well, after today, better than hopefully we've had all day. Okay. Our feeling is that this, this whole question of hoaxes distracts from the actual fact that the world's future is in, in peril. What is the message? What the world wants to hear is that the developed countries should pay their climate debt. The recording is not live. So you can say all your lines. I'm not going to put them on the air. I'm not covering the real issue as you put it here today. I just have a very narrow set of marching orders. I'm supposed to look into one avenue of inquiry today, and that's why I was contacting you. Uh, well. All of this happened. The center of it was Uganda, and nobody covered yeah. Uganda. No, no, and this no. asshole, well, they missed the yeah. fucking point. Nice guy, didn't want to talk about I think, Uganda. I think Even you're right. I think that's interesting. Interesting. That is the